Hi and welcome. This video is to make a chuck key for this chuck. You're probably asking yourself, well why would you dedicate a whole video to that? Because it's pretty easy to make a chuck key like this one uh, without much effort, so why dedicate a whole video to it? Especially if you know the trick of having a uh, collet block for your mill. It's easy to do the flats. So, if it's so trivial, then why would we dedicate a video to it? Well, this one's a little more complicated because this chuck, for whatever reason, is reverse. So the chuck key has to have a hollow rather than a very trivial uh, pokey piece. <laughs> for want of a better term. So, we're going to make a chuck key for this chuck to go on my rotary table and uh, be forewarned that unfortunately my uh, camera died at the very end so the part that you're probably most curious about hollowing out the end part uh, in the square shape I've lost most of the video on that <laughs> but I'm gonna go through it anyways so here's my design I chose to use through to use stainless steel you can use whatever you like cold roll is probably a lot cheaper i love the look of stainless steel i use 303 stainless because it's easy to machine on the scale of uh, stainless steels and it looks great when it's finished uh, the handle is fairly straightforward it's just half inch stainless steel stock that i round over the ends on i drill a hole through the three quarter inch shaft uh, of the main body and put an allen screw to lock the handle in place because I hate when they slide around. Um, I didn't try a press fit or anything like that because I just wanted to be really positive. I even notched the half inch handle part so that the allen screw would have something to seat in so there's no chance it would slide out easily. Then lengthwise, I left it up to the user. I needed a really long key. One of the reasons I was making this is because I needed something that would extend over the edge of my mill table. So I'm choosing eight inches, but choose whatever size suits your needs. And then it gets weird. Uh, you might be wondering why it's in two parts. And that's because I don't have uh, an angle mount for my mill table that's big enough to hold an eight inch shaft vertically so I can have a stable platform to mill the square end out of. So instead I chose to make it in two parts that way, the part that I have to mill out, uh, I can mount in the vise and uh, have a sturdy, stiff uh, mounting point. Anyways, if you have a angle block, which is not an expensive item, but I just don't have one, especially that large, uh, feel free to make it one piece and save yourself a lot of trouble. All right, let's go on with the build. So to start out, I uh, work on the removable end piece, and I'm going to start by facing some stock, you know, cutting it to length, drilling the holes, and then I'll work on the main shaft next. So here we are just facing the end of some 3 quarter inch uh, 303 stainless stock just to get things nice and square. And I want to make sure it's round, not that this is critical, I just like it that way. Uh, this part really doesn't need to be carefully round, but I wanted to remove the outside finish because there were some blemishes from the manufacturing process of the three quarter inch stock.
I will end up sanding this piece later because the finish isn't great. So now I'm center drilling before I drill out most of the excess material for the square end so that I don't have to mill it out because I'm going to be using an eighth inch milling cutter and they're very delicate. So the less material I have to remove the better. And I'm really particular but I try never to return tools that have any chips on them or dirty. It just drives me nuts. This is my mistake that I'll talk about later, but I chamfer the end because I just sort of automatically do without thinking, and that was the bad part, without thinking. That ends up making the end not so great. So I'm going to part off this piece so I can flip it around and cut the pin. And you notice I sanded it. So before I go back to finishing the key, the removal key end of this uh, collet chuck key, uh, I have the three quarter inch stock in the collet chuck. I thought, why not? Let's uh, center drill and drill out and ream the female mating part for the removable section of this key. So working on that first. I like to step up in sizes of drills from the small, you know, not jump straight to the final size so that the final drill bit doesn't have to uh, remove as much material to get a nicer cut. I do ream it though because I want a really nice fit. So now back to the removable part, let's cut the pin next. Start by facing the other end of the part I just parted off and cut the pin. I take this part really slowly. I uh, measure often because I want the final pin size to be as close as possible. I just really appreciate a tight fit. It doesn't have to be in particular because it's going to be pinned anyways, but I really like a tight fit, so I take my time. Just getting my first measurement, trying to get a starting point, see how much material I need to remove. Stainless steel does have a rep of being tough to work with, but this 303 is pretty easily machinable. Not quite as corrosion resistant as other forms, but still pretty good. And it looks great. That was to remind myself, 100,000 depth of cut using stainless steel for the project. If I did it right, plus it's pretty warm, I'm sure. Twenty-six thousandths. Speed it up so we can get a little bit better. Finish.
I love looking at a cut in progress to look at the before and after material finish differences. Sorry about the, uh, the noise in the background. That's the fan blowing on the mic of the camera that I wasn't aware of when I was shooting it. Not bad. Chips actually took a lot of the heat with it. Okay, about 8,000. I want to catch the burr on the edge. Yeah, about 8,000. That's a champ for it. I wanted to remove the burr before I measured again, so... Like I said, I was taking my time. I really wanted to walk this in and get a tight fit. Not because it's necessary, just because I like it. So I've left just enough material that I can put a final sanding finish on it and get it to size. And I need to take it to final depth because I left a little material. Historically, every time I try and shoot straight from my final dimension at the beginning, inevitably on one of my passes I screw up, so... I've kind of learned to go most of the way and then take the last bit in one pass at the end. grit sandpaper with some oil on it. If you put oil in the sandpaper first, it tends not to load up as much. Checking for a burr. I've been faked out before by leaving a burr on. Feels too tight, but actually it was just the burr holding it up.
Nice arm. Completely blocking the view. Sorry about that. How's that? That looks like a pretty good fit. No wiggle. So now we're working on the main part of the handle, the long part. Uh, you can see the part I reamed on the right in the live center. And I'm just taking a skim pass to clean up the outside surface. Oil and sanding. And we'll part it off and uh, don't need the live center to part it off. Matter of fact, that'd probably get in the way. That might be a better view. I sped the video up because parting can be kind of tedious. And I need to take parting slowly because you go too fast, you can get chip buildup and break your parting tool, which I've done before. So now that I've skim cut the long part of the shaft and sanded it to make it a nice finish, we're going to flip it over, mount it back in the chuck, uh, drill and tap the hole to hold the handle in. Uh, but before I do, I decided maybe it'll look better if I round over the end of it. My drawing doesn't show that, but that's sort of an aesthetic uh, part I decided to add of my own, sort of a flair that uh, isn't necessary, but I thought it'd look good. This tool is a brazed carbide cutter. As you get close to the end of the cut, I start walking it in very carefully. This cutter has a quarter round with a little small section of, of square on each side. So you can just walk it in until it's just starting to touch on the square portions and you'll have the quarter round correctly. It's a pretty small cutter, so I get a little squealing. I think that's as much as I go. Hey, first time I'm using the uh, new adapter plate. All right, let's center drill, drill and ream and tap the hole for the Allen screw set screw that will hold the handle in place.
Boy, the fan noise is terrible. Again, I apologize. Didn't know it was blowing right on the microphone and the camera. Till now, that is. I think tapping in high speed is so much more satisfying than tapping in, well, normal speed. And this concludes the main handle section, at least as far as the lathe work is concerned. So let's move on to the cross piece on the handle and round over the edges. That finishes one side, let's do the other side. So that concludes the lathe work. So let's move over the mill and start with milling out the flat for the cross piece on the handle so that it doesn't slip around. So I notice I find the edge of the width of the, of the handle and that's really not necessary because I'm gonna be cutting all the way through the part. But I do need to know the end because I know the length so I can find the halfway it's point. Not super critical. So touch off, set my Z, I'm using the quill for this, I normally use the knee for almost everything because I like to keep everything as stiff as possible, but this is a pretty easy cut so I use the quill. So this will be the flat for the set screw to seat into on the cross piece. In hindsight, I think I might have liked a little hole or a divot instead. I think that would give it even better positioning sensitivity. I think this flat's a bit much. It's a half inch cutter, wider than my drawing, and don't exactly like it. All right, so. Let's make the hole for the cross piece and the handle to go into. And we'll walk up in drill sizes. Start small and get bigger. One, so we don't take so much material in one bite, but also because dr drill bits, the very center of a normal twist drill doesn't actually cut material. It sort of pushes it out of the way. So, Especially if you're doing a large hole, you need to drill smaller holes first so that the center point can seat into an existing channel so it doesn't wobble around.
Bigger drill bit, slower speed. So under heavy load, my Albrecht Chuck self-tightens. <laughs> so it can be tough to get undone. All right, let's move on to the removable piece next. Uh, first yeah. step, roughly find the center. Very roughly. Yeah, but this actually helps making, aligning the coaxial indicator initially a lot easier because it's very sensitive so it's better if you're pretty close to begin with start here indicator to find center. This is center within those are half thousand increments, so a couple th a couple tenths. Not bad. So as I promised, here's just the very end of cutting out the square hollow for the key. I used an eighth inch solid carbide cutter and all I did was took the final width divided by two subtracted half the width of the cutter and just used my DRO to walk corner to corner very slowly. Most of the material had already been drilled out, um, so it wasn't hard, but this cutter is very easy to break. In the past, I've broken these cutters almost every time I've used them. A little bit too much cross feed, too much push, and they snap. So next, uh, I have the brilliant idea of using the eighth inch carbide milling cutter to drill a hole. And they work, it's a center cutting bit, but it doesn't have great chip clearance when you're plunging. I'm running about 3,000 RPM. My mill goes to 4,000. These uh, small cutters really want to go fast. I should probably pay attention to chip clearing a little more. And he breaks it. <laughs> and because now I've got a chunk of carbide mill cutter stuck deep inside the hole, I have to drill a second pin. So I drill and ream a second pin hole. After all, I wanted to use the carbide milling cutter as a pin in the first place, so it was a plan. I realized I could have drilled from the other side and punched, used a punch to push the cutter out, but since I didn't accurately locate the hole, I thought that'd be more hassle than it's worth, so I drilled a second hole. So I was going to show you the complete final assembly with this part being pushed in, but unfortunately it uh, had a uh, carbide bit break off, and I was using the carbide milling bit to, cut, to drill a hole. And it broke off inside, not quite sure why, probably because uh, I was almost done and everything was nearly perfect. This was a suction fit, so it was very nice. Got a roll pin for here. Uh, which I am going to have to grind off on the inside.
there really is no need for these ever to separate. The only reason I made them in two parts is because I couldn't hold the end part vertically uh, in the mill. I didn't have any fixturing, easy way to fixture. I could have held to the side, but I thought about that. I thought it'd be easier just to make it in two parts so that I could cut this with the end mill. As you can see, it fits very nicely. And finally, just the handle. Part of my problem is I use stainless steel uh, and uh, kind of hard. So there it is. I made it extra long. I made this extra long so I could uh, have it over the side of the uh, milling table uh, when I'm milling so it wouldn't run into anything. Maybe that was a good choice. We'll find out. All I have to do is still cut that part off. Good to go. Oh, but hold on. There's an epilogue. So here she is in all her... I did make some modifications from the drawing, which pretty much is a trivial aesthetic modification, which is when this was all three quarters of an inch, I thought it looked a little bit clunky. So I just put it back on the lathe and tapered it in so it looked nicer. Um, here is the end result of the square milling operation. Uh, one little note, I did chamfer this hole when I drilled it out originally. That was a mistake because you can see the little round bits uh, left. kind of makes it look less pretty. Um, it is very square inside. works just fine. Um, I think I'd have a better finish if I hadn't done that. So I don't know why I chamfered. It's just sort of a natural uh, thing. Every time you drill a hole, you want to chamfer it a little bit, take the burr off. But I should have done it uh, a lot more lightly. Um, here it is working. Uh, Works just fine. <clears throat> I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.